Okay guys, we're going to start with what's considered the lock body of the handcuffs. They are uh, a conical shape. So the pieces that we're cutting out of are quarter inch mild steel and they're sort of a wedge shape. There we go. We'll get these into the fire and over to the swedge block. My wife recently bought me a small swedge block for Christmas and uh, it's been working out awesome and we're going to use it to shape the lock bodies for these handcuffs and as we roll these around because they're a wedge shaped piece we're going to end up with a conical shaped tube which will house the locking mechanism later on and the reason it's cone shaped is so that uh, part of that locking mechanism will wedge itself in and, and lock into place there we go. We're going to build two sets of cuffs. So this is from a live stream I did a couple of weeks ago on Sunday. And we did a, a welded tube around a mandrel. And that uh, welded tube at the time was sort of an experiment. I've done a couple of these since. And we used a piece of half inch stainless steel we rolled it over in the swedge block and uh, got ourselves a scarfed seam little borax and we welded this uh, a couple of times and then we set about expanding it we needed to be just about one inch on the inside the inside diameter and it didn't take too long to get it there it welded up very nicely it's a good solid piece and it's about uh, eighth of an inch to three sixteenths thick depending on where you measure it in the tube. So this is one of the uh, tubes that I made recently. It is uh, I believe the one that we saw in the video. I took a chunk of that and uh, drew some lines around it as evenly as possible and we're going to follow those lines with this hacksaw to create some rings and these rings will be reinforcement rings that will go around the end of the lock body. They're there for a couple of reasons, and as this progresses, you'll see why. There we go, forge welded rings. We're going to clean these guys up. Not take too much off the inside. We need the thickness. We just take the burrs off of them. All right. Very good. So we've got our lock body, and we've got it clamped in the vise with the large end up. And using this file and the vise as a file guide, we end up with a nice square shoulder on the outside. And what we're going to do is we're going to drive that ring down over the top of that shoulder. And it will help to keep our seam closed up on this lock body because the seam is just matched. It's not welded together. And we file down a little lower than the ring is thick so that we could peen the end of the lock body over and lock it into place. And we'll have to clean up the inside to get rid of any peen that went toward the inside. We've got things to put in there later. We don't want anything in our way. So to keep this good and solid and secure, there we go. Look at that. Coming along nicely. So like I was saying, to keep this nice and secure, what we're going to do is braise that joint where the ring comes to the body. A couple of pieces of uh, brass on there, some borax, and into the forge. I found this, um, I don't know, a little bit magical almost watching this. It's kind of cool. It's just amazing. And it finds its way down into the gap between the two pieces of steel and seals it off. It's just to keep it stable just so that it never works loose. That kind of thing. It'll add its security for your handcuffs. When we clean these up real nice. We're going to probably have to clean them up a couple of times during this process. There we go because we will go back in the fire with these a couple of times, but 
every time we file them we take off a few more hammer marks and get them a little more uniform so we want them to look real nice when they're done all right so i've got this little hand crank drill i decided i wanted to do a lot of this by hand to sort of experience what it would have been like for someone to build these back when these were a, a thing and uh i gotta tell you it was <laughs> an experience but um that little hand crank drill was made more for woodworking projects and not so much for this but it worked out and we got ourselves some files in here and open this up now this port that we're putting in here this is one of the reasons the ring is on there to reinforce the end of this tube this port is where the handcuffs the cuff portion will click in and lock in place so we need to cut that port in all four of these there we go it's looking pretty good so far I'm happy with that all right so for the other end of the lock body we need a hinge plate something for the cuff itself to rotate on so this is actually a piece of eighth inch mild steel and the wire that we're using as a mandrel here is um, a piece of coil spring that's been straightened out we'll also use that for the hinge pins we wanted something a little more sturdy and this fullering tool i made this specifically for these hinges to get them as tight as i could I'll wedge that open and uh, get that pin out of there so I got them back into the fire to squeeze them nice and close together and all that. And there was a little brass left in there. Got on them, but it matters not. We're going to file all that off anyway. So we're filing this end round. Because that's the end that's going to go on to the end of the lock body. And we wanted to match that shape. There we go. Those didn't come out too badly either. So far, this project is moving along pretty well. And it's looking pretty good. So, I don't have a post drill yet. I'm looking for one. And as soon as I get a hold of one of those, I'll be doing more work with that. But for now, technology. Use our regular drill press. And we're opening these up to just slightly smaller than the lock body itself on the small end there we go all right before we attach them to the lock body we're going to go ahead and cut for the knuckle that will be on the cuff and it's a hinge knuckle obviously so you can open and close those cuffs catch the bad guy slap the cuffs on him And most of these processes really didn't take too long. Mild steel and a good sharp hacksaw blade. Some good files and it comes along pretty quickly. There we go. These guys are just about ready to uh, be put in place. All right, happy with that. Very nice. Okay, so we're using our file again, and the uh, vice is a file guide, and we're going to file this down so we've got a nice square shoulder again on the small end of the lock body. And we will drive our hinges on and pin those over again. So the reason I decided to build a set of handcuffs is because in my regular job I'm a locksmith and I have sort of a fascination for locks anyway. And I've uh, been fascinated with this particular type of handcuff for quite some time and I've never had an opportunity to build a set of these. So I thought it'd be fun to do that and take you guys along for the ride. Okay, so... 
enough for two sets of handcuffs. And we're going to get these into the forge as well and we'll go ahead and braise those into place so they don't come loose or rotate any of that kind of thing. I don't think that they would with that peen on there but uh, added security. All right so this is actually going to be the cuff and we're going to narrow this up. It'll be 5 8 inch wide on one end, half inch wide on the other end, and we'll be giving it a sort of a distal taper from the large end to the small end. The small end is what will be engaging the lock, and the large end is where we'll put our hinge knuckle. Now, big dog, always wanting pets. <laughs> There we go. So they all came out a little bit different length. So we'll line them up and we'll cut the excess off the ones that are a little too long. So when I made these, I measured them for my hands. My hands are fairly large. And I wanted to do that because if there's ever, I don't know how long these things are going to be on this planet, but if there's ever anybody playing with them or it's locked into them if they're a smaller person. I don't want them to be captured by these things. And if you've got hands as big as mine, you should either know better or you should probably be in cuffs. I don't know. So <laughs> that's the reason I built these in the, on the larger side. All right. We're going to give ourselves a punch mark. or as the Smiths in England call it, a center dot. And we're gonna use this guillotine tool to isolate our hinge knuckle for these cuffs. And that worked out quite well. Now our job is to create a knuckle that will fit into our hinge plates that we've created and we need four of these and they need to be all the same and this is one of those things that i really have fun with i love recreating this kind of part it's unique and uh seeing just how close you can get from one part to the next but i'm very much a visual reference guy so if i have one available to look at I can pretty much make the next one look look pretty close. But we will refine them with some file work. Clean them up, get the sharp edges and the roughness off of them from forging. We got ourselves a lock body. So we can refine this as much as possible with a hammer. So we don't have so much filing to do. Now we need to create a hole in the center and we're going to make it a mortise and tenon joint and this is where the chain between the two cuffs will attach. So I got myself a punch that uh, I had purchased at a yard sale last summer and I simply ground it to the shape that I wanted and set about punching these holes. Didn't take too long didn't go badly at all and you saw the punch marks the center dots that I put on them for reference and where to put them so they all came out pretty much the same there we go all right so this was a bit of a challenge the uh, entire project it was uh, it sort of tested all my skills but uh, it was fun. It took a while. This took several days to accomplish. I only had an hour or so a day to work on it. I'll get you up here and you can take a look down at those holes. They look pretty good. And we'll just do a little cleanup on the shoulders, get rid of any sharp spots. And we'll see if we can get the scale off these guys as well. And we'll uh, 
drilled holes in for the hinge pins. And again, we'll be doing that by hand with our little hand crank drill. I was having a lot of fun with this sort of thing. Little drill and the, um, just the basic tools. I've been sort of doing things retro a little bit lately with the solid fuel smithy and these old tools and it's it's a lot of fun it kind of takes you to a time where you know before we had battery operated drills and all that good stuff oh look at there there we go it's a happy little hinge <laughs> All right, we're going to get the fire scale off these guys and uh, shape them a little bit around all the corners so there's no sharp edges. We don't want anybody cutting themselves. We will be putting these back in the fire to shape them again. But like I said, I file them a couple of times and uh, it'll make them look a lot better in the end. There we go. Okay, so in another live stream... We uh, made some chain out of quarter inch material. And we made some small links. And it was a bit of practice, but it worked out okay. And I liked the chain, so we kept it. And we're going to use it for this project. You'll notice that uh, as I'm forging this, there's a metal tab hooked to that link. And that metal tab is actually going to be the tenon that we're going to shape to go into the cuffs. And this went pretty well. There's a little bit of practice in doing chain that small. I'm not great at chain anyway, but to get it to weld without burning it or get it too deep into the fire it was a little bit of a challenge, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Chain is something I'll probably do more of in the future. Okay, we got our center link. We open it up. We attach the other two. We'll close this up and we'll give it a, a good fire weld there. A little borax on it. Okay, so we needed to do this times two. We need a chain for each set of cuffs. And the reason I decided to build two was because, uh, well, if you're going to build one, why not go through the effort and make two of them? I have to do the processes anyway. So we'll end up with an extra set. And honestly, I have no idea what I'm going to do with these. <laughs> but uh, they're fun to build. So uh, there we go. Get them all cleaned up. Made them round on top. Got rid of all the sharp edges. And now we're going to create our tenon on the bottom of this. So we measured out the slot in our cuff. And... Uh, We'll cut this out and file it to shape to fit in the cuff in that mortise that we made. And these actually came out a lot better than I ever thought that they would. I took my time and uh, made sure that I got things as close as I possibly could. I mean, I had to narrow up that tenon a little bit, and there you go. It fits pretty good. And we're not going to attach these quite yet. There we go. We've got both chains. All four tenons done and they fit pretty well. All right, this is the shape of the cuff that we need to make so that it pivots correctly into the locking port on the body. And we took our time. These, uh, this monkey wrench that I'm using here, I've rounded the jaws off on these and they make a really good bending wrench. You can adjust them to just about any size material. 
and these things can be found almost anywhere. So we bent the first one up to match our brass, the second one up to match the first one, and we custom fit each one to a lock body. So once they're custom fit to that lock body, they uh, stay together. So it takes some little brass pins to hold those together. All right. So once this radius was put on this cuff, I was a little worried that the shoulders of the link were going to have some gaps behind them. But I kept it good and warm with the torch while I peened it and all those gaps closed up. It uh, ended up being a very nice fit. I was very happy with that. I'll do the other one of this set and we'll show you that joint. There's something very satisfying about doing that. I'm not sure what that is, but anyway, here's that joint. Came out nice and snug. Looked really good. I was very happy with that. You can see our little brass pins that we have these things held together with. So time to get rid of those and put in our regular hinge pins. Again, heat them up with a torch. You're going to see a few sparkles coming off these. They are a spring steel and I heated them up very quickly and uh, the little sparkles actually are the rough edges sort of burning off from around the edge of the uh, riveted ends. And this one was a little long so I just heated it up and I'll take a little off down to the size I wanted and uh, that peened over very nicely. Clean them up and those joints will be good to go and work very nicely. Alright, we're going to start working on the lock mechanism. Now this particular piece of mild steel is half inch and I did turn it down just a little bit. I needed it to fit into the conical shaped body a little deeper so we took just a little off the outside. So it's just under half inch. And we're a little out of focus here, but we'll get that squared away. So I created myself a square punch because we had drilled a round hole in the center. And I just ground this punch down to a square. And we're just driving it through the center of these plugs because we need a square hole. Our locking mechanism has a thread on it and you rotate a screw to activate it and these square holes in these wafers will keep that from rotating but it will allow it to slide back and forth through the hole so they're a um, a lock guide is what they are we'll also use some of these as part of the locking slide or the locking mechanism you'll see that here in a few minutes it become clear to you we got all the burrs off those. So these guys are made with a piece of quarter inch round. The lower mark will be the length of the locking piece. The upper mark is how far we will thread it down. And we're threading this with a quarter twenty standard thread. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to square this off. I will flatten two sides and hopefully keep them as parallel as possible. And I flatten them down to just about the bottom of the threads, clamp it in the vise, and use it as a file guide again. So I get a nice square shape. There's enough threads left on there that the key will actually grab those threads and pull this mechanism back but it will slide through our square guide that we created and not rotate because we need this locking mechanism to maintain alignment 
with the cuff. So the little wafer we drove on the one end, there's a spring and our screw will pull that back against the spring. We're going to go ahead and braise this on. We'll use a torch. These parts are too small to fit into the forge and do this. I would uh, be trying to fish them out of there. And they would probably overheat anyway. So the torch did a good job. And this is what it looks like. So now we need to file. Yeah, it resembles sort of a shark fin on the end. The particular shape um, lends itself to wedging into the hole in the locking end of the cuff. And like I said, it didn't take too long to finish off all four of those. And that's what it looks like. That's your locking pin. And before we go into the fire for the last time with these guys, we'll put our initials on there. We still do not have a maker's mark. Need to get one of those. So we'll bring them up to temperature and as they're cooling down, we'll get some beeswax on them. I brushed a little of the scale off before I did this while they were cooling. And the beeswax will get inside and all around and just keep uh, anything from rusting up or jamming up. Okay, so that we can test and assemble, we need to create a key. Now what the key is, is it's uh, simply a thumb turn, or a thumb screw, and it's threaded on the inside and the narrow end to a quarter twenty. So when they were putting these on prisoners in the past, this is something I recently learned from a handcuff forum um, where there's a bunch of collectors that I've been talking to about this. This particular uh, type of handcuff, the prisoner would have to stand still while the guard or whoever was putting them on or off turned this screw several times to lock them or unlock them and the guards actually ended up with the nickname of being a screw. So if you ever see an old movie where they call the guard a screw, this is why apparently. I did not know that. You learn the strangest things. Okay, we're gonna clean this guy up. We'll cut him off to length. And I calculated the lengths and sizes of these things. Um, and made my best guess on a lot of it, and it all worked out. So I wasn't going off any particular template here. All right, so this little process, we've got a uh, just under a number seven bit there. I kept a bit small because it was wobbling around a little bit, and I need to tap this for a quarter 20. This process took about 20 minutes to go just about three quarters of an inch deep. <laughs> And I probably won't do that again. <laughs> anyway, we got her tapped for a quarter 20 and it reaches into the cuffs and it draws back that locking piece. Locking piece on a spring and then our little square hold piece will jam itself into the narrow end of the cuff. We can close the cuff push back in the locking piece and seat them into place and prepare it for the next process. There we go. And the key goes in the back end and it retracts that threaded rod and the locking piece and releases the cuff. Now I didn't show putting the holes in the end of the cuff on these things. Um, it was footage lost, so it was just drill a couple of holes and file an elongated hole in the end of the cuff in the appropriate place. So There we go. We cut four plugs, and these plugs will go in over the locking piece to keep them secure so someone can't reach in there and just push on it. So we need to file these to the right size to fit down inside the large opening. 
All right, and we keep filing and checking. And we'll just drive these in and they'll wedge themselves into place and uh, get them down in there just below the surface of the lock body. And then we'll peen that lock body edge over towards the inside to retain this cap. A lot of these were staked into place with a bunch of punch marks and I really didn't like that aesthetic. So we're peening it into place. There you go. So the lock mechanism is encapsulated and secured. Let me give you a little demonstration of how these guys work. There you go. And like I said, I made them quite large. Um, I cannot get my hands out of them. I can come very close. You can see the screw in there. That's retracted to open them. It's a big dog forge stamped on them. Good and strong. All right. There we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun. So if you think about it, why don't you like, share, and subscribe if you like the video. And we'll see you next time right here at Big Dog Forge. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye-bye now.